friends. Um, I'm streaming on a different computer, but hello. <laughs> hello, Oliver. Hello, Scully. Yeah, I, 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 I did a wave emoji, but then I... Oh, wait, your message was retracted. I don't know. Hello, but I thought it would be interesting to um, actually stream myself, setting up all the stuff that I use to stream and talk about the different things. Let me know. I know, I guess there are a couple people watching, which is pretty cool. Uh, let me know how the audio is. Um, I am just using the microphone over here, so it's not like the best microphone, but let me know. And yeah, just thought I'd set up, talk about my stuff. First thing, blue screen. <laughs> um, Kaizen, hello, it's been a while, how's it going? Um, let me know how the audio is. So I'm gonna go grab some water, but uh, let me know, um, can you hear me okay? Is it too echoey? I don't know how, what I can really do to fix it, but let me know. Be right back. Acceptable audio, not great, but not terrible. I think, I, I think I'm okay with that, just because in like 30 minutes when I really start streaming, I'll have my like legit mic and everything. Uh, but hello, uh, Michael Thompson, Nabil, AJ, JT, welcome to the show. Um, yes, first thing is the blue screen. So I actually used a, a green screen for a while, but then um, this being the coding garden, I wanted to wear shirts that had green on them, like with flowers and things like that. Um, so I went the blue screen, and I found that um, it seems to work a little bit better. Um, just in terms of like, there are less things that are blue than are that are green. I don't know, <laughs> but that's the first part of setting up. Um, and for that, I have a portable stand. So I'm gonna get this set up. Hello, Dan from Coding Train. Welcome. Um, so, um, this, I think it's just called like a green screen stand. You can get it for like 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon. But it comes with these two things. I will set them up now. <clears throat> so, uh, when I'm in Denver, I have like a, an office in my house where everything just stays set up all the time. But since I've been in New York, every time I stream, I have to set everything up. <laughs> um, which is why I don't stream as often, but um, just thought today, I'm feeling, I'm, I got a little more energy than usual, so I thought I'd stream and talk about it. So the interesting thing about um, this room is it has lights that have a sensor on them, so I have to keep moving or the lights will turn out. So I, I set up my green screen at like a slant so that wherever I'm standing, I'm like moving the motion sensor. <laughs> um, then the second part is the top part. So that goes there. And good morning, Sanjay, welcome. <laughs> um, so because everything is portable, like I always have this thing folded up and it's actually pretty wrinkly, um, but it seems to work okay. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm back home in Denver, I have like a, a steam thing where I can like get all the wrinkles out, but 
I try to fold it as best I can, and then it seems to work. I get this tape out of there. So I guess you can see it's it's a little wrinkly, but <laughs> um, it it works pretty well. Like um, I guess I don't know if I'll, I'll probably show OBS, which is the software I use for streaming, and you can adjust um, what color gets taken away and how much gets taken away. So um, typically I have to adjust it just a little bit and like make sure there are no shadows or anything like that. Um, the other thing. Uh, when you buy the, the stand, it comes with these clips, and I use those to make the screen just a little bit tighter, get rid of some of the wrinkles, not all of them, but some of them. Oops. And hello, Bob, yes, behind the scenes. Not as good as it gets. Um, inside of OBS, I actually uh, crop my camera just to make sure that um, there's nothing extra on the sides or anything like that. I'll figure out if I can show that in a little bit. Um, next bit is hooking everything up to my streaming computer. So I use uh, this is a Razer Blade. It's like a gaming laptop. Um, so mainly you need a a pretty powerful computer to be able to um, basically take in the signal from my laptop, take in the signal from the camera that I'm using, uh, take in the signal from my microphone and be able to process all that without dying. <laughs> um, so pretty much any decent gaming laptop will work. Mainly it needs a dedicated video card, but this is what I use. It's nice and portable. And um, typically I have, so I'll have all of the streaming stuff running on that laptop. And then I also have a YouTube live chat up over there. And then I use some software that lets me use my mouse and keyboard from my Mac on that so I can control the stream while also like working on the on my laptop. Cool. Um, yes, next thing is are the video capture devices. So I use the uh, Elgato HD60S. Um, this is what I've had for probably like a year, year and a half, maybe two years now. And this is one I got more recently. They're the exact same model, just they have like a different, one of them is a little bit newer. But this is what allows you to take the HDMI from uh, a camera or from a laptop and then capture the signal inside of OBS. So I use one for my laptop and one for the HD camera that I use. And then, 
So the camera I use is just a Canon uh, HD camera. Um, I've had this for, for years now. I think it was maybe two or three hundred dollars when I got it, but it's 1080p um, and it's, it's decent quality. Um, and it has uh, mini HDMI out. And I have a converter that plugs the HDMI into the capture card. And so this is the camera that actually looks at me and points at the blue screen and we remove the background with the blue screen. <clears throat> okay. And then this is the little adapter I have. So it goes from HDMI to mini HDMI so that I can plug it into the, uh, the camera. But the other end goes into the capture card. Uh, and uh, Dan from Coding Train says, and I bet it doesn't shut off every 30 minutes. It doesn't. I've, I've heard of so many people that have that, that issue and like watching your stream, like the, because you know the DSLRs are limited, they can only stay on for so long. Um, but the, the key to getting this one to stay on is it just has to have power. So I have it. Yeah, just a power adapter for the camera itself. And as long as it plugs in, it, uh, as long as it's plugged in, it will, it will stay on. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, it's like it's not the best camera, but um, it's it is HD. <laughs> I don't know how comparable it is. Like it's def it's definitely not a DSLR. Like it's not amazing, but it, it works. It definitely works. And hello, Jenny. Welcome to the stream. Oh, uh, Zuber is asking, uh, do I use Team Viewer or any other software with Tony on stream? so that we can both access the code. I actually use a Zoom. So there's software for sharing screens because you might have seen the, um, the new request in Newbie Tuesday streams where Tony is remoted in and like controlling my laptop. We use Zoom for that. I haven't tried TeamViewer. Um, in my experience, Zoom has the best screen sharing because um, pretty soon, and I think on Sunday, we're gonna try to do a stream where I actually show his screen instead of just showing mine. And that's one of the key things, like I don't want it to be all grainy and pixelated, so Zoom really does a really good job for that. Um, and then for plugging in those capture cards, they come with a USB-C cable. The main thing with those capture cards is they need a USB 3, so you can see it, but it's not blue. Blue USB cable, so um, there's a lot of data going through those cards, so they need a, a good, a fast connection. So. One end goes into the car, the other one goes into the laptop. And typically I just try to plug it into the same ports because uh, when I boot up OBS, it automatically detects them because they're in the same ports. But if I ever get it wrong inside of OBS, I can just switch the, the two different cards because they are the, the same card. <laughs> oh, uh, Dan just says, just share it on the community deck. Oh my goodness, <laughs> thanks so much, Dan. That would be a lot of viewers. <laughs> thanks so much. Um, but yeah, I, I think um, just knowing that, so the thing is, like, the way I do it, it's not the best way, it's just the way that I figure it has worked. Uh, there's one gotcha about the capture card that I'm about to share. Um, but yeah, just like knowing what's out there and knowing the different bits, bits and pieces to use can like help you start a stream or, or anybody that wants to do things on the web. Um, other thing is power cable for all the things that plug in. Okay. And then the other USB cable for the other capture card. streaming back home in Denver, I do, I try to keep my wires as tidy as possible, but you're probably going to see this is become, going to become like a big mess of just things plugged in everywhere. Hmm. 
Oh, interesting. So, non-streaming related question, but a good question from Sultan. Um, do you think an experienced developer can make a good income from private mentoring, similar to Code Mentor? Um, I signed up on Code Mentor, so if you're not familiar with it, it's a website where you can go on and offer your, yourself as a mentor or someone that can help with coding, and then other people can log in and say, I have this problem, I'm willing to pay this amount for you to help me. I haven't used it personally, but I, I think it can work. Um, before I became a teacher of code and programming at Galvanize, I had never like officially taught in any capacity, so I absolutely believe anyone can learn to teach and be a good mentor. It just just takes practice and like knowing what to look for and being um, very aware, <laughs> being aware of what the student knows and doesn't know, and being aware of what you know that the student doesn't know. Um, I I, th I think it's it's a very it's it's very doable, but it does it does take work. Um, and then also power cable for the laptop to keep it going. And then the one gotcha I found with the capture card. So I think it only does this with Macs because typically, so that the, and that's another gotcha, those capture cards that I showed you only work with Windows. Um, they, they do sell a version of the card that works with Mac, but I found um, they don't work with, with Mac, plugged into a Mac. Um, and then there's this really weird, weird bug that I have not fixed yet where every now and then, if your laptop is plugged into one of the cards, like the mouse will freeze. Um, I searched everywhere. The one fix that I've come up with now, maybe they've fixed it in like a new firmware version, but I actually plug my laptop into an HDMI splitter and then plug the splitter into the capture card. Um, this has the added benefit if you're ever like live streaming an event, you can take the HDMI from the presenter's laptop, plug it into here, plug it into the capture card, and then because it has two outputs, you can take the other one and plug it into a projector or a TV. So I use it for that, but also when I'm streaming, even, even though I'm only plugged into one thing, I use this to prevent the mouse from freezing when being plugged into the, the other capture card. So the idea is, one HDMI cable will plug into the splitter, and then an HDMI cable will come out of the splitter and plug into the capture card. So I have two HDMI cables. Um, take the smaller one, go from the out of the splitter to the in of the capture card, and then the uh, end of the splitter is, gets connected to my laptop. So this is going to get connected to my uh, coding laptop. Okay. I think the last part is my microphone. <laughs> so, um, oh, I shall show it here. I've used a few different microphones. Um, I'll I guess I'll show you what I used to do. So this is just your standard condenser microphone. It plugs in, uh, I believe that's XLR, like your standard microphone uh, plug. And this takes phantom power. So what I used to do is take a condenser mic like this and plug, plug it into an audio capture card like this. So this basically, allows the XLR, plugs into here, and then this has USB out. I used to do that. Now I have a microphone that has, it's like this all in one. It's like microphone with USB all combined. And that's the, the Yeti microphone. This one. <laughs> um, so this is the, the Blue Yeti microphone. Um, it's a really good microphone. Picks up sound really well and has multiple settings. So um, I forget what they're all called. There's, there's like cardioid and a few others, but basically I use it to where I'm talking into the microphone and it picks it up right here. But it has a setting where you can use like in podcasts or interviews where um, one person can be talking on this side and another person can be talking on this side and actually records it as stereo, which is cool. 
Um, and then there's also a mode where it just detects sound all around it, but I use it where it detects sound going directly into it. Um, this is the, the, I guess the standard edition, but it just has one HDMI plug right there, and that plugs into the laptop to record the audio. They sell a pro version that also includes, so it includes USB, but it also includes the XLR, XLR out, so if you want to use it um, for just regular things that aren't USB as well, you can use that one. Um, initially, I thought this had that, but uh, it doesn't, but that's okay with me, so it has that. And then also, um, I don't use it, but if you want to do any monitoring, it includes a headphone plug-in, so you can actually hear exactly what the microphone hears, but I don't use it like that. So that's the microphone. Um, and then, my microphone stand. <laughs> so. Um, this here is a shock mount. So the thing about condenser microphones is they're very, very sensitive. So if you use them on just a regular microphone stand, they'll pick up sounds from the keyboard or anything else that's like um, traveling to the microphone. Like any sound that like would touch the microphone stand would travel to the microphone. So this is what's known as a shock mount in that it basically suspends the microphone in air. Uh, so if you accidentally knock the mic stand or something like that, um, it doesn't travel as much to the microphone. So the microphone just mounts right here and it's like floating in air and uh, prevents any like outside disturbance. And then I also use a pop filter that just goes right in front of the microphone. So this. And then that, that microphone plugs in with a uh, mini USB cable <laughs> and then plugs in there. Let's catch up on the chat. Um, oh, thank you very much, Sultan. Uh, Coding Train is saying, this is so useful, even though I've been streaming for a while and I really have no idea what I'm doing sound-wise and would love to make some improvements. Um, and do I have a list of my equipment somewhere? I don't, but I will, I should do, I'll do that right after this. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll probably put it on like the, the Coding Garden website. Um, all of this stuff I got on Amazon too, so you can check it out there. Um, so I don't have all of my equipment here because some of it's back in Denver, but I used to um, basically live stream the presentation events that Galvanize would give. And for that, I had a little bit more of a setup because the presenter, I would be streaming their screen, and then they would have like a microphone on. So back home in Denver, I have a um, wireless mic receiver, and then like an over-the-ear mic. I've never actually used it streaming. Like I found the condenser mic works great, um, but that's that's another option. And then this just so I guess I'll show you, but. The, the bottom of this microphone has, it's uh, threaded. So that shock mount just uh, screws directly into there. And it's, it's a shock mount made specifically for this microphone. You can also get shock mounts that just like hold on to the sides of the microphone, but this one's made specifically for this one. So, and, and it's uh, a, um, interesting that you mentioned that, Dan, because I, I know you have the video of when uh, you were going through all of your streaming equipment, and like I watched that religiously when I was first starting to figure things out. Um, yeah, and like one of the things is like I, I kind of wanted to emulate your, like, you have like the weatherman style where the code is behind you and you're pointing at it. I, ne I never really got there. Um, which is why now, I'll show you when I stream, I'm actually just 
sitting down and then I crop my camera to be just like the part that's right behind me. Um, but back home, I actually do have like a standing desk and I have a little bit more room to like move around. Um, but I'll show, I'll show right in there. So this is where I sit. <laughs> Um, and, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, mute the microphone while I move things around, so I'll show you how the, the other stuff is set up. You couldn't hear me, but um, basically where the camera is right now is pretty much where the, um, the HD camera sits. And um, I position it to where the blue screen is behind me. You can't see the Windows laptop. You pretty much see like the top half of my laptop and you can see the microphone. Um, when I have it set up back home in Denver, I have a lot more room to work with and I have like the standing area. So I typically set it up where you can, you can see pretty much my whole laptop and like I'm standing while I do things. Um, here it's just harder to stand because there are like podiums I can bring in here, but sometimes they're in use. So at this point I've just given up and I just, I just sit <laughs> while, I, while I stream here. But I do, I do like standing. Um, let's actually, let's point at how these things are all plugged in together. Okay, so um, this is the splitter that I was talking about earlier. So right here is the input to the splitter. So that is not yet plugged in, but that will plug into my laptop. And then the output of the splitter plugs into the uh, capture card here. And then that is USB, which plugs into my laptop. Um, and then I can show you a little bit closer on the camera here. So the uh, uh, converter I have plugs the HDMI to HDMI mini into the camera, and then there's a power cable that plugs into the camera to keep it going. And this will typically be mounted on the, um, the, the, the tripod <laughs> that this camera is mounted on right now. Um, and then let's, let's see how it all plugs into the other laptop. just so I don't accidentally um And uh, Bob says, um, you, never really, you never really realize how much goes into a stream. Wow, great move, CJ. Keep it up. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. So to show how this all plugs in. So this is the, um, 
the streaming laptop that I use. And actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and boot it up. You can see it boot up. Um, I'm actually dual booting uh, Linux on it. So typically, I have to choose Windows before I boot in. So let's go into Windows. Cool. Don't look. <laughs> Elmer says, two of my favorite people on YouTube in the same vicinity. Yes. <laughs> uh, Dan is one of my favorite people on YouTube as well. CJ at the coding train. Uh, so when the laptop boots up, typically I just exit out of all this stuff that usually loads. Um, the, the main thing is, like because this is my streaming laptop, I want to make sure that the only things running on it are uh, the streaming software and like the, the YouTube chat. Because like anything else will slow it down. You could get like... Uh, the software might freeze or different things like that. So I try to just make sure nothing else is running and it's just ready to go with the streaming software. <laughs> Oliver, and here I was getting ready to copy down your password. I, so I have, I have thought about, like, I've, I've typed my password in many different times on stream. And I've heard of, like, um, some sort of hacking attack where, like, you can detect by audio or maybe even by frequency interference which keys are pressed when. And nobody has done that yet because I haven't been hacked since I started uh, <laughs> streaming. Oh, and yes, uh, Oliver is mentioning uh, Windows bar on the top, controversial. So I actually, so my first professional job was writing uh, C -sharp .net software. So it was Windows, I was doing Windows development. And the having the bar on top is actually more ergonomic. Like you, your mouse always needs to go up to the top of the screen to close windows, to choose like the file menu and stuff like that. So by having it up here, you don't have to move your mouse as far. As far. <laughs> um, so I mean, it's just a thing. Okay. Uh, Dan mentioned he also yeah uh, people hacking. I I'm always paranoid anyway, so I just I change my passwords constantly and. Just hope for the best. <laughs> um, OK, so you can see how we plug into this machine here. So it has three USB ports on it. The first one, this is the output of the capture card that is capturing my Mac laptop. So that plugs in here. And then this USB is coming out of the USB microphone. So that captures the audio, and that will plug in here. And then, if I find it, yes, this is the output of the capture card for the HD camera, and that plugs in on this side. <laughs> Windows key X, does that close Windows? What is, yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so now everything's plugged in. Um, I do realize, like, I'm going to start this up. You might not actually be able to see anything. Um, but I'm curious what the best way to do this will be. I might potentially be able to switch streaming laptops. So you see this. I don't know. Let's just talk about it though. Let's <laughs> let's let's see if this is if this is decent enough. I could probably do a separate video that's just like how I use OBS and set it up, but. This is the classic Coding Garden intro screen. And in OBS, you can choose your scenes on the left. Yeah, this isn't going to be like an in-depth thing, but it'll just show like how it all works. Um, let me actually go power on the camera so you can see everything plugged in. The other thing that I forgot to mention is the HDMI in to the splitter, which goes into the capture card, goes to the HDMI out of your laptop that you're going to be uh, recording. So that, okay, good. <laughs> I was just thinking, um, I was like, that might have actually ruined my 
stream here, but I'm not sharing my screen. I'm just sharing video, so it should be fine. Hello, Libinison. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so we're kind of all hooked up. The, the MacBook is plugged into the capture card. The microphone is plugged into the computer. The HD camera over there is plugged into the capture card. So when we go into the scenes here, we should be able to see everything. So typically I have the CJ only one. And this is what I was talking about earlier. So this big black thing on the right hand side is that it didn't detect my camera capture card. So I just have to go into settings and add it. Oh, you know what? Oh, no, we're powered up. Let's see. Cam HDMI. I may, I may need to restart OBS now that I've turned things on. Let's, let's try again. There we go. Okay. So <laughs> there's, there's this scene where the, the HD camera over there <laughs> is uh, pointed at the blue screen. So you can actually see that it, I have, I have the settings set up where it's removed. And so uh, we're floating. And so that camera is typically on the opposite side of the room over there, pointed behind me. And then I have another scene which shows um, whatever is being displayed on my laptop and then <laughs> um, the blue screen on top of it. I realize this is not the best way to showcase this. I really need like screen capture on this machine, but it's all hooked up and OBS allows you to choose different scenes. So I have like my intro song scene. I have like the one where I'm sitting. I have the one with the laptop where I'm in the corner. Um, I have another scene where it's just camera. I mean, sorry, just screen, no camera. Um, I have another one, I think, yeah, so this is where the camera takes up the entire screen. And then this is the fish cam. If you've watched uh, Dash, my uh, fish that <laughs> lives back in Denver, typically I'll switch here and then you can see his, his, his uh, fish cam plugged in over there, but that's not plugged in right now. And that's pretty much it. I'll probably, I think it, I think it would make sense to just do a separate video to, um, talk about how I set up OBS and um, <laughs> uh, handle all the streaming and coordination and stuff like that. Uh, Jack is saying, coding train, great. <laughs> but um, are there, are there any, any questions, any, um, yeah, any questions about what I do or how things are plugged in? Or maybe I didn't explain something exactly right and you want to see it again. But I do think that this is pretty cool, though, to have, like, kind of the behind the scenes shot of <laughs> that. Um, and uh, Oliver's actually asked, so we were talking about passwords. Have I considered using a USB security key for auth? I have. There's this thing called uh, the uh, YubiKey, which actually you plug in. It's, I guess, kind of like a password manager in a way, but like when you touch the device, it sends a secret key, which unlocks your passwords. I thought about it. Bob says, who's feeding? I'm not sure what that question means. Um, but then asks, will we have a coding garden vlog channel? Probably not. <laughs> uh, I've thought about this a lot too, because um, if you see a lot of, a lot of YouTube channels, uh, they're very highly edited and uh, they have like a persona. I, I just try to be myself and just like talk about what I do. I'm not, try <laughs> I'm not trying to be anything that I'm not. And I don't know, I guess a vlog would be interesting because it is, um, I guess, talking about what you're doing. I don't know. Typically, I like to um, just um, start streaming. I mean, and that's that's the main reason on my channel. I don't have any edited videos. Well, probably the main reason is, is I'm lazy. But also, I like to create things and just show the full process instead of just showing the edited down version. Because um, in a way, it, it shows that it's, it's uh, much more attainable rather than watching like a 10 minute video where in the real world, it would have taken hours or days to do that one thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, Bob is asking who's, who's feeding Dash, my fish. So I have a, a coworker back in Denver uh, that feeds him uh, 
multiple days a week, make sure he's well fed and cleans the water and all that good stuff. <laughs> uh, thanks for stopping in, Dan. Uh, have a good day. And you're very welcome. And yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll get that list. I'll post it in your Slack so you can see the, the different equipment that I use. Uh, Amr is mentioning, uh, take a look at LastPass. Yeah, I've, I've tried a few different password managers. I haven't really set up all one. Cool. Any other uh, questions about the streaming equipment or the setup or anything like that? Before, uh, I think I'm going to do like a, uh, it's, I guess it's afternoon now, afternoon tea. I'll just like browse the web and maybe code something up. I'll give you a few minutes. I'm going to drink some water. <laughs> Sultan with the $3 super chat. Thank you so much. Sultan says, awesome content. Oh, a good call. So uh, Jiraj is asking, like, what are my collaboration settings with Tony? Um, let me figure out how to show that. Are you ready for this? CJ section. <laughs> um, you should be able to see my, my desktop now. Um, but for collaborating with uh, Tony, I use a software called Zoom. And uh, this just lets you set up meetings where you can have audio chat, you can have video chat, and you can also share your screen. But I was mentioning earlier that uh, Zoom has really good screen sharing. So it, it, it's typically in HD and it's not like pixelated and typically doesn't um, like have dropped frames like uh, typically happens in things like Hangouts or even like Slack uh, video share. Um, so Zoom works really great. They have a, a free plan, but you can also get like a pro plan. So typically I'll start without video and then share my screen. And then it, is, it gives you, I'll show you real quick. It gives you a unique link. So, um, Actually, I, I guess I'll show this because it's, it's unique every time, but you get this unique invitation URL. You give that to someone and then they can join the meeting. No one joined the meeting. I'm going to close this immediately. You won't be able to join the meeting. <laughs> um, but you can join the meeting and then anyone in the meeting can share their screen. Uh, and so on Sunday, tomorrow, we're going to be, me and Tony are going to be collaborating with Git. So I want to show his screen so we can show him committing and then we'll go back to my screen. So we're definitely going to use this for that. In meeting for all. Okay. <laughs> Back to OBS, and this is uh, so. This is studio mode in OBS. So you can see on the right hand side is what people on the stream are seeing, and the left hand side is what you want to switch to. So I want to switch to this, so that you just that way you just see me and the camera. <laughs> cool. And uh, Bob is asking, what is the splitter for again? Uh, let me pull back OBS. Um, so it has to do with. So my laptop is plugged into the splitter, and then the splitter is plugged into the capture card, which goes into my computer. The main reason I do that is when I've tried plugging my laptop directly into the capture card, it might be just a Mac issue, but my mouse will freeze every now and then. And it's super interesting because it's not that the, the whole screen freezes, because if I have like video playing or something like that, the capture card still captures it. But for whatever reason, like I can't use my mouse every now and then. Um, but by plugging it into the splitter, uh, that prevents the capture card from doing any weird things where I can't use my mouse. Um, I still haven't figured it out, but what I, what I use now seems to work well. Um, Amr is asking, any coming collaborations with Daniel? Uh, we had talked about it a while back. We're in the same city. I'm only here for like two more weeks. Hopefully, I'll probably reach out to, to see if something can, can happen. But I do know Dan is a very busy man. Um, school is starting and all that stuff, so we'll see. Cool. 
Any other questions before I end this? This, this is pretty fun. Um, and also, I guess if you're watching this afterwards, feel free to throw questions in the chat or throw them in the Discord. Happy to answer and share any of my equipment as well, or links to equipment that I use and things like that. Okay, I'm gonna call it there. Thanks everyone for uh, tuning in. Super, super thanks to uh, Sultan for the three dollars super chat, and thanks for Dan for uh, for stopping in. Um, oh, one last question from Jiraj. Will I use the whiteboard? I, I have it here, but one thing I can do, and what's cool about OBS, is you can have multiple cameras plugged in. So I can have one camera pointing at the, the blue screen, and then another camera pointing over there, and then I can switch to it and walk over. Um, I haven't used it since I've been here. I have thought about, like back in Denver, my like home office setup, having potentially like one area as the whiteboard, one area as the blue screen. Um, I haven't done it yet, but it's, it's very it's doable, it's possible. Okay, I'm gonna end it there. Um, watch, watch the channel. I'm gonna go live uh, in five, 10 minutes and just do like a, an afternoon tea stream, so tune in for that. But uh, see you later. I don't have any outro music because we're on the other computer. <laughs> we'll see ya. <laughs> oh wait, I thought I clicked the button. I thought it was gonna be like, oh.